What's up, YouTube? Jay Lee here. No, got another Northwest podcast for you today. Um, <clears throat> real beautiful morning, even though it's it's overcast and rainy. Um, I honestly think that with the coronavirus and everybody being quote, quote unquote quarantined or basically social distancing, staying inside, I think that it's helping the environment. Um, I think that it's helping the weather and stuff. I've noticed that the sunny days are more sunny. Even on this day where it's overcast and rainy, which is pretty typical for Seattle, it's actually a really beautiful day. There's You can smell the rain on the grass and things seem beautiful, blooming, clear. Boy, I, I don't remember a day this nice. Um, you know, Seattle's an interesting place because, you know, we don't get a lot of sun, but the flowers are very blooming because we get a lot of rain. And when we do have a nice summer, very beautiful lots of unique flowers and stuff like that but with that said I want to segue into what I'm going to talk about today on this podcast and I'm gonna talk about the top five reasons why you should probably stay single as a man in 2020 okay I think a lot of guys when we first start out as um, red pill men of course, I'm talking to red pill men, but this video might reach more than just red pill men. If you don't know what the red pill is, Google it. Basically, the red pill is just the truth about society, the truth about the way things really are. And a lot of times in the manosphere, particularly when it comes to like MGTOW, et cetera, um, when, when we mention red pill, what we're talking about is, you know, the truths about how women behave in society, the truths about, you know, interpersonal, social dynamics between men and women. All right, so that's what, what I talk about on my channel. If you're new, if, if you don't, if, you, if, you never, if you've never heard this before, but my guys who follow me, you guys already know what I'm talking about. Um, so let me jump right into these top five. So I'm gonna, first off, I'm gonna name the top five, and then I'm gonna go through each, li each, each one, um, you know, point by point and talk about them. Sure doesn't seem like everybody's social distancing, right? <laughs> so this is what it usually is. A lot of cars out. Seems, I, I feel like people have, of course this is Saturday morning. You know, maybe people are getting out. Maybe people are taking this time to say, you know what, let's go do something even though it's rainy. Um, pretty weird, man, pretty weird. But then again, the world's getting weird and it's been weird recently. It's getting weirder and weirder, you know? Anyway, so let me list off these top five and then let me talk about them. So the first one is gonna be hypergamy. That's the number one reason why guys should not be in a relationship and should probably stay single, hypergamy. Okay, the second one is gynocentrism, okay? The third one is divorce statistics, alimony, and child support. The fourth one is hookup culture. The fifth one is toxic narcissist female behavior or toxic narcissist female culture. All right, so let me just jump right in and start talking about these. And they pretty much all are synergistic. They link up together. They, they all kind of play off one another. Usually three or more of these are present in any one female. Now, a lot of times, you know, guys think, oh, you you know, I, I meet a lot of these male feminist cucks who just say things like, you just hate women and, and oh, not all women are bad and, and you just had a couple bad experiences and now you hate all women. And, like, bro, no, we, these behaviors are across the board in one way or another. And if she's not like this now, she'll be like this in a couple years. I've dated girls that were pretty cool when I first started dating them. And then after a while, you know, they started to play into these, these points. And it's because this is what society does to women. It's because this is what feminism does to women. This is what more exposure, the more you're out in society as, as a female, the more you, be, you become like these traits. Because for whatever reason, um, you are encouraged to behave like this. I, I, it's just the way it is. Like the more women are exposed to 
the single life, the more they're out there, you know, playing the field, the more they're going to fall into these categories. Now, hypergamy is female nature, okay? Female nature is hypergamy. She wants the guy who is the best she can get. She. This is why women often go after bad boys because bad boys play by their own rules. Most guys have to play within the rules. Most guys, you know, are too afraid to be a bad boy or too scared to stand up for what they want or too scared to go after what they want or if they do go or if they do go after it they go after it in a timid way so women are attracted to the guy who's different than the other guys they're attracted to the guy who is a master of his own domain who's you know who's the 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 irony of feminism is that women act like oh yeah i want equality and woo 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 but in reality they want the strongest male in reality they want the male to be the leader in reality they want the apex male they want the alpha it's just what it is now unfortunately for females they also want the domesticated guy they want everything all at once they want the they want the bad boy they want the um they want the strong male leader guy. They want the breadwinner. And they also want him to be domesticated. I heard once a woman explain it like this. She explained it. Um, I want a man who's a bad boy and I want to tame him. I want him to be a bad boy for everybody else. But when it comes to me, I want him to be a sweet, nice guy who settles down with me or something, something along those lines. And I just thought, wow, that's... Jeez, that's that's true. I think that's true. I think that's what women want. But um yeah, I mean that's just kind of fucked. It's just like so you want you want the dangerous bad boy and then you want him to settle down and not become dangerous with you. And then you wonder why y- you no longer l- love the guy in 5 years after he's be- after you've domesticated him, after you've betaized him. Then you wonder why you're no longer attracted to him and you seek out another tough guy or another bad boy it's this like this this irrational silly cycle continues because women quote unquote don't know what they want but then they really do know what they want they want uh like i said they want the bad boy they want him to settle down and be a nice guy and when he when he does when he when he is domesticated then they seek out the bad boy again for more sex and and the cycle repeats and repeats etc until they just that their their sexual market value was used up. So um this is uh the number one thing which is hypergamy. Men shouldn't date in this scenario. You should not play into hypergamy. And we do play into hypergamy. It, it, it's part of it's part of who we are as men. We want to make more money. We have a drive to be ambitious. We have a drive to wear nicer clothes. We have a drive to be in better shape. Why? Because we want women, and women want the guy who is in better shape. Women want the guy who has nicer clothes. Women want the guy who has more money, who has a better car. This is what guys are doing. This is what we're all out doing. This is why. We are so ambitious because we want to impress women. And it's like, dude, you got to live your life for yourself. Now, I'm not saying don't self-improve. I'm not saying don't get in better shape. I'm not saying don't be healthier. Don't wear nicer clothes. If you're doing it for yourself, fine, that's okay. But if you're doing it to impress a woman, in effect, you are kind of toolizing yourself. You're becoming a tool. And believe me, I've done this a lot in my life. I've spent a lot of time in my life trying to improve myself in order to get a woman and at the end of the day you realize this is stupid what am i doing like why am i doing this and it's like you we spend so much time to impress women and it's like maybe it gets us sex maybe it gets us a girlfriend for a while but it doesn't ever really get us love right so if you really want love if that's your goal then you want to find somebody who accepts you for who you are which doesn't necessarily mean you should just be a lazy bum because that's not attractive at all but at some point you have to say you, you at some point you have to realize that female hypergamy in a sense is bottomless. There's no end to it. Okay? As great as you can be, there's always going to be somebody greater than you, 
right? So you have to say, you know what? This is a dumb game that I'm playing because I'm I'm not going to be able to win this game. I might be able to temporarily succeed with one or two girls or whatever. You know, I, I got a girlfriend now. A year later, she dumps me for a better guy. And then you play that game for, a, for a, a, you know, five or so years and you realize this game is pointless. I can't win this game. Because there's always going to be someone better than you. There's always going to be someone who has a nicer house than you. And there's always that potential, you know, for her to, to, to trade you in and go up, uh, you know, with the guy who has a better, who has a better career or a bigger bank account or a bigger dick, or, uh, he's got better abs than you, or he just, he's better looking than you, wears better clothes. It's endless. And do you really want to spend your whole life in that cycle of trying to beat out the other guy? It's silly, but I see so many guys doing this. And really, it's a disservice to yourself. It's a disservice to yourself. You're, 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 I was very unhappy when I went, you know, when I lived my life like that. And I still sometimes catch myself trying to improve, not for myself or, or doing things to impress women still that this isn't going to make me happy because I'm not, actually, you know, I'm living for somebody else, right? So the second thing, um, I mean, that is a, I, you know, I could write a whole book just on hypergamy because hypergamy is fucked. I mean, the female nature thing is fucked. And it's like, if you're going to do it, if you're going to get into a relationship, like at least find somebody, I guess, who accepts you for you if you can. And if not, then just stay single because I would, I would never want to continuously impress my woman. And bottom line, this is what women want. They want a guy with a house. Bottom line, I'll just tell you straight up. They want a guy with a house. You need a house. Apartment, maybe for a while, but it's not going to impress her that much. You need a house. She wants a guy with a house. Men have houses and that's what she wants because it's female. It, 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 it's, it's, animal, it's animal nature. We want houses. We want a nest. We want a place to, 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 to rest, lay our, lay our heads and raise kids. And that's what women want. They want a guy who has a house so they can raise kids. And if you don't have a house, you're probably not going to get chosen. Okay, even the nasty women, they even the ugly women, they they want to do with the house. It's just what it is, and um, that in and of itself turned me off to to the whole idea of love. Oh, I, oh, I have to have a house in order for you to love me. Like that's not love, dude. That's not love at all. So, bottom line, that is what it is. And there, I know there are guys who will, who will just accept it. It's just the way it is, man. It's just biology. It's just the way of life, and you know that's just the way things are. You either you either accept it. You know, or, or, or you just, you know, you're a loser or what it's just like, then I, I'm a loser, I guess. I don't want to accept it. Like that's bullshit. If you don't love me, if I'm suffering, if you don't love me, if I'm down and out, you don't love me at all. And I don't want to have a fucking kid with you because that's not loyalty. So that's how I've always felt about that. Um, but the second thing is, uh, gynocentrism, gynocentrism, which is, uh, you know, the uplifting of the fe- of the female entity in society, you know, women and children first. So women and children are put in the same boat. Essentially, women are not necessarily. Now, you could look at that two different ways. You could say, oh, well, well, women aren't really considered adults. Women aren't the same as men and they're in the same category as children. Well, kind of. I mean, if you think about it, if you break it down, a woman wants the guy to have money, wants the guy to take care of her while she raises the kids. That's kind of childish. You're kind of de- you're kind of a dependent. You're not independent. You're not. I don't need no man, but yet you do need a man because what are you doing? You, you, you on the one hand you say, oh, feminism told me I don't need no man, so therefore I can not need no man and and be be independent on my own. But then when it comes to choosing a man, you want a man with money. So I guess you do need a man, or at least you need a man's money. You see the hypocrisy there? That's absolute hypocrisy, and that's. That's that's gynocentrism, right? Gynocentrism is we uplift women above men. We view women as dependents. We have to have money in order to get women. A guy that I lived with when I was 20, 21 years old who was married, had had a couple kids. He was paying a mortgage, had, an, had a cool little house. I lived in his basement for a while, paid rent. Um, I had a couple conversations with him, um, you know, like a older guy to a younger guy conversation type deal. And, and one of the things that I asked him once is I asked him about women and I, you know, cause he was a married guy. So he had experience. He, he, he was, he was successful in his marriage, um, and his relationship with his wife. 
I think. Of course, there's a couple times when I think his wife was making eyes at me, but that's, the, you know, that's neither here nor there. That's, you know, women get horny too, I guess. I was, you know, I used to work out a lot, a, a lot more, or I was a, at least in better shape when I was younger. I'm not in terrible shape now, but I mean, I was in even better shape when I was younger. So she might have, she might have been looking at me a couple times, but. Um, you know, that is what it is. I'm not going to be like, oh, she was unfaithful. I'm just saying that's, that's female nature. That's, you know, everybody gets horny. It is what it is. But, you know, he was still successful with his wife in so far as she was faithful to him in so far as, you know, they had a successful relationship and she was raising his kids and he worked and came home and it, and it functioned, it worked, their relationship worked. So I asked him based on that, you know, what's, What's your advice on, you know, someday I might want to get married. What's your advice on women? And he, he didn't say anything. He didn't talk a bunch. The only thing he said was this, women are expensive. That's it. That's all he said was women are expensive. And I was just like, oh, okay. All right. All right. Uh, okay. Like I'm like, I'm 20, 21 years old. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Women are expensive. Okay. All right. Like <laughs> it took me 10 years to understand what that meant. Women are fucking expensive. This is the this is the the hypocrisy of modern feminism. They act like I'm independent. Woo woo woo. I, I don't need no man. Yet you do. Yet you seek after a man with money because women are expensive. See? You see where I'm going with that? Women are expensive. Gynocentrism takes away accountability and responsibility from women. They don't have social checks and balances anymore, particularly with second wave feminism coming into play, which removed accountability for loose sexual behavior. You a, 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 After the 1960s, 1970s, after the free love movement, etc., you couldn't criticize a woman for sleeping around and that social stigma was gone, which was definitely there before. If you were a slut in the 1950s or 1960s, you would get called out. People would people would call you out. Look at this slut. Look at this harlot. What the fuck is she doing? Da, da, da. You would get called out and you would kind of get a, a, a bad a bad rap on your name. Okay? But what happened in the 1960s, 1970s? They removed that accountability. They said, no, it's my body, my choice. I can sleep with whoever I want. And indeed, you can. But what they tried to do, and I believe pretty fairly successfully try, uh, 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 did, was remove that, that, that social checks and balances to where people accept you now for being a slut. So you can go be a slut until you're 30, deal with all the ramifications, and still like, oh, I'm, I'm fine, I'm pure, you, you, you know, I, I can still find love. Well, guess what? Nine times out of 10, you can't find love because you're damaged. This is why divorce is so prevalent. I talked about this on, on my last, um, I think on my last podcast where I, I definitely defined the reason why divorce is one of the top reasons why the why divorce statistics are so high because of promiscuity. Because the more people sleep around, the less um, apt they are to have a successful relationship. This causes divorce. It's, it's, it's way deeper than that. Promiscuity is huge. It causes children without uh, children out of wedlock, children without a father, which damages society. Okay, we're, 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 we're raising all these effeminate young soy boys who don't know how to be men because there's no father in the picture because the woman just slept or their mother just slept around. Okay, STDs, abortions, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so these are all things that are results of uh, 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 of the pro of the promiscu promiscuity movement. So, or, or I should I shouldn't say the promiscuity movement, the second wave feminist movement that removed the accountability for being promiscuous. Right. So that's that's gynocentrism. Gynocentrism says women can do no wrong, even in the one thing that they really should not do which is sleep around because women hold the keys to sex men don't a man can 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 go to a, you know I've used this example a lot in the past a man can go to a bar and hit on 100 women and maybe he'll be able to take one home if he's lucky a woman can go to a bar hit on 100 men and go home with all 100 of them that very second that's the difference between men and women that's why women are sluts and why men are studs and this is and and women just they, they can't wrap their head around that sim simple example and that simple concept that it's not the same between men and women when it comes to access to sex. Not at all. 
Men have to be extra special to get laid. Men have to be, we, we, we can't just be your regular Joe. We got to do some extra special shit. Not only that, not only do we, we, we got to be extra special, good looking, etc. We got to have an air about us. We got to be fucking James Bond. We got to walk in the bar like we own the place, have extreme confidence. Not only that, we got to say all the right things at all the right times. Okay, that's just what it is, man. I once heard a woman try to try to d- d- uh, defend uh, promiscuity by saying, or not promiscuity. She tried to she tried to uh, define and explain how women are are easily bedded, and she said women are just looking for an excuse to have sex. Like, yeah, okay, maybe, but also, yeah, nah. You gotta have game. You gotta dress right. You gotta be good looking. You gotta say all the right things at all the right time. Women aren't just most women aren't just looking for an excuse to jump into bed. They want that extra dude. So hypergamy exists extremely in in hookup culture. I'm gonna talk about hookup culture in a second, but hypergamy exists even amongst hookup culture. Sorry, it's just the way it goes. That's just the way it is. That's just the truth. Um, women are not just jumping into bed with any regular damn Joe just because he's there. I'm not saying that doesn't ever happen. Sure, sometimes you just get lucky. Like I said, if a man hits up 100 women, he's gonna get lucky with one of them probably and that but that's usually one of them and that's it and then and then a lot of times guys get you know disenfranchised and we get discouraged because fuck I got to hit up a hundred women every you know once a week or whatever just to get one just, you know I got to hit up a hundred women a month just to get laid once gosh it's so much work and it is it's a ton of work men have to work hard to get laid and there's so many times where even, even me I've been in this experience where a bunch of times you're you're almost there. You get to a certain point. It, you know, it's like a video game. Like you you play a level and sometimes you die right at the beginning of the level. And then you start over and it's like, okay, that's not that bad because I died at the beginning of the level. Sometimes you die at the middle or the end of the level and you're like, fuck, I was so close to beating this level. And that's what it's like with guys. Sometimes we'll get so close to sex and yet no cigar because... We say the wrong thing or she just doesn't feel comfortable for a second or somebody comes into our set and ruins it or we get cock blocked or or, or some guy tries to amog us. There's so many things that can come into play. And if you study PUA, PUA, right, you know this, you know all the things that come into play. There's all kinds of shit that comes into play to, to ruin our chances of getting laid. So anybody who's, who acts like I mean, this, this this is just an example of the extreme hypocrisy when it comes to women and feminism. On the one hand, they act like, oh, everybody should like sex and sex is easy and woo-woo-woo. On the other hand, they act like you don't deserve sex or you got to do all this. To get. It's like such hypocrisy. I mean, it's constant hypocrisy. And again, this is gynocentrism where there is double standards in society for women that, that men don't get. And then the irony of the whole fucking thing is they turn around and they act like men actually have privilege. Privilege, a bowl of shit. We do not. We're the ones who have to work hard to get everything. We have to work hard to get the house, or else we're never going to get a wife. We have to work hard to get the money, or else we're never going to get a woman interested in us because women want money. Sorry, you're gold diggers by nature. It's your fucking female nature. That is hypergamy. Sorry. Okay. Not only that, we we're the ones who got to do all the courting. Not only that, we're the ones who have to say all the right things at all the right times, dress perfect, be good looking, be muscular. Make eye contact. We can't, uh, we, 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 we gotta be positive. I mean, the list goes on and on. We gotta be funny. We gotta have a good vocabulary. We gotta pay for drinks. We gotta pay for dinner. We gotta, it's just like, there's so much that men have to do. And yet we are still, per, uh, we, we are still placed in the, um, role of oppressor. We're the oppressor. I mean, it's just fucking ridiculous. It's absolutely fucking phenomenally ridiculous how retarded and stupid this whole gynocentric society is. It's just absolutely backwards. Like men do, we get no respect and we got to do everything and we get no respect for, okay, maybe we'll get our dick sucked. Like, great. That's awesome. It's fun getting my dick sucked, but if you got to know all the bullshit that I got to go through just to get my dick sucked, how many women I have to hit up just to get my dick sucked, how much money I got to pay for clothes to look cool, how much, how many hours in the gym I got to, I got to do how many fucking, uh, 
sit-ups and push-ups I got to do just to get my dick sucked and, and still we're the oppressors and still there's that huge fear of, gosh, what if she tries to give me a false rape charge? Gosh, what if she has an STD that she didn't tell me about, which happens all the fucking time. Women have STDs and they lie and they don't tell the man, okay? I'm not saying men don't do that too, but I mean, come on, uh, uh, you know, so... It's, I mean, gynocentrism is out of control in the West. And the, and the sad part is it's not even recognized. Most men just take it on the chin. Oh yeah. You know, women, you know, women, this, I, I, I got to do all this shit. Okay. I guess it's worth it. Cause I get my dick sucked. And it's fun getting my dick sucked. I guess it's just like, ugh. all right. So that's number two gynocentrism, which is why you should probably stay single. I mean, these are all things that, that you know, should really, really turn you off from wanting to enter into (laughs) the dating field. And, and again, you know, it's like, it's like walking through a minefield, like something's going to fucking go wrong. You're going to step on a mine at some point. You're going to fucking harm yourself at some point because there's so much shit that can, that can happen. I mean, hypergamy in and of itself is a ticking time bomb. The, 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 the fact that, okay, you got a girlfriend now, she loves you. She sucks your dick. She thinks you're great. She, she takes it in the ass or, or she lets you doggy style her or, or maybe it's just a beautiful loving relationship and you guys don't even fuck. You make love and it's great. And you, she kisses you and she looks into your eyes in the in, in the moonlight and you hug and it's all beautiful up until she just decides you know what fuck men oh she she reads some fi- some feminist article that tells her you should have more than one guy at all times or her her nature just takes over and she just starts to monkey branch on you you know what this guy's getting boring oh it's it's kind of boring I think I'm gonna go look for somebody else or you know what I he he he, he works at a sporting goods store he he rents an apartment it's a studio apartment. I don't think he's going to be able to afford a kid. Now I want kids before I just wanted love. And I got that. I found love and it was great, but now I want kids. And you know what? I don't think he makes enough money to make kids. So I'm just going to trade him in and get a better model. And we have to worry about that all the fucking time. That's what you got to, that's what you're, that's what you're going to go through. If you get a girlfriend, that's what you're going to go through. I mean, at some point, if you're just not, if you're just not bad boy enough, or you're just not this enough, or you're not cool enough or this, that, or she meets some other guy who's just way fucking more suave than you, because you're probably not that suave, or maybe you are very suave, or maybe you're a suave Puerto Rican guy and you got this flavor about you, but she, she likes you, but she wants a square guy. Now she wants a guy who's, who she wants a white guy who's, who's, who drives this kind of car. And I mean, there's so many variations and and variables. And then we wonder why women are sluts. We wonder why women sleep around because they've got a hundred percent access to it at all times. It's like a kid in a candy store. It's like, it's like fucking a, a, a kid at Willy Wonka's factory. Like any, anything you want at any time you can get. I mean, that's the whole point of, of Willy Wonka is like, whoa, this beautiful factory where I can have all the candy I want, any variation of candy I want. And I'm running free and I don't have to pay for any of it. I remember when I was a kid, when I wanted candy, I had to bum my mom for 40 cents. I remember going into her purse, taking like 40 cents out so I could get a, I could get a, um, and I remember thinking like, okay, I can get, I can get a, maybe I can get um, a Tootsie Pop. Maybe I can get a, a Chico stick. Maybe I can get a pack of gum with this. What do I want today? And it's like, you're, you're buying this little bullshit for 40 cents. And, and that's what men are like. Men are like, okay, I, you know, I make this amount of money. I got these kind of clothes. What can I get? Maybe I can get this girl over here. Maybe I can work hard and get this kind of girl Women are just like, they got all the money. They own the fucking store. They got all the access to the candy. They can get any guy they want at any fucking time, even if they're remotely attractive. Why? Because they own the sexual market and they know this. So why would they settle down? Why would they settle for you? Oh, because you think love is real? Really? Is your love deeper and and, and more ironclad than Chad Thundercock over there? Who's got 10 inches of dick that she wants to try out? And she knows she can get that anytime she wants. All she's got to do is jump on the dating site. (laughs) Bro, I mean, this is the society that we live in. This is, this is how women behave. This is what it is. Okay. Which leads me into, that's actually more like hookup culture. All right. So that's number four hookup culture, which is, that's a culture we live in. And anytime they can hook up at any time, they can jump on a dating app at any time they can get dick and they know this. No one know it, knows it better than women. They know it. That's why they walk around with this 
undeserving sense of self-accomplishment, the, 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 this smirk that they got on their face at all times. Why? Because they know they can get dick at any time they want from a black guy, from a Puerto Rican guy, from a Mexican guy, from an African guy, from a white guy, from an English guy. They know they can get it at any fucking time. That's hookup culture. That's the society that we're living in. You think your relationship's going to last when she's got a bevy, a plethora of d- different dicks that she can have at any time of the day or night? Come on, bro. Come on. I mean, she, two in the morning. Oh, you know what? I, 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 I woke up. I want some ice water. Now let me hit up Tinder and get some dick and a guy will be at her door in a half an hour. Any guy. I'm telling you, man, this... How, how the fuck are we going to succeed? How the fuck are you going to have a successful relationship? All right. Now, that's... Okay, so if you do get past hookup culture, then you, then what? Then you maybe maybe get dating, etc. She's probably not going to be loyal to you because she's a narcissist. Because that's what gynocentric society raises is these narcissists, right? Toxic narcissist female culture. Toxic narcissist female behavior. Who watches Wendy Williams? Who watches Tyra Banks show? Who watches Oprah? It's all about you go girl. You can do anything you want. You can be a slut and still find love. You can be a total whore and still become a millionaire. You can dress like a slut and still be respected and woo 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 just because you're a female and this is what they have been pumping into society for the last 20, 25 years with these bullshit talk shows that just play into female nature, that just play into um, toxic female uh, nature, narcissist behavior, narcissist where, where, where men are saying, yes, dear, men are the new women, men are the ones who are... Um, you know, kowtowing to pussy, kowtowing to women. Men are the ones who are, um, you know, saying yes, dear, and, 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 and agreeing with everything a woman says. Because if you incur her wrath, she'll dump you in a hot second. She'll be dating your your best friend by next week. Because you, this is what this is what we're forced to live in. We can't do anything else. Like we have to, we have to kowtow. Because if you do anything wrong, she'll dump you in a hot second. Because there's because you're exchangeable. You're you're 100 percent exchangeable in a hookup culture. You're 100 percent exchangeable as a man because there, there's always hypergamy. There's always somebody better. She will trade you in for a better model at any time. This is toxic narcissistic female behavior. Okay, if. You do potentially find a quality woman or or let's just say you, you who know who knows if she's quality because women change all the time. She could change next year. She could she could totally turn around turn everything around on you at any point, trade you in because it's happened to me a bunch of times. You thought it was you thought she was so sweet, you thought she was so great, then all of a sudden you just don't take her on enough dates or you don't do this or you don't do that or you just start acting beta. You just start you just start liking her, you start loving her, you start holding her and hugging her and all of a sudden you're no longer the bad boy that she was chasing. You're no longer that cool guy who was aloof and she had to impress. Now you're just the dude who really loves her. Now she's like, oh, I'm bored now. I want to go find somebody else. But let's just say you pass all that. Let's say you got a somewhat decent one who's not, I mean, obviously you're going to have to settle because now they're all sluts by the time they're 25. They've slept with at least a hundred guys. I bet most of them on average. Okay. That might even be on the low side. Um, So you're going to have to settle for a slut. So let's just say You pass all that, you settle for the slut, woo, 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 and then all of a sudden you guys get married, it's all great, right? But then one day she just decides she wants to divorce you. Then one day she just decides she wants to take half your shit. Then one day she just decides she don't want you no more. Well, guess what? There's laws. You don't even have to get married. There's laws 